and welcome to Slater's, Slater Drama's production of My Gun is Pink, which will be followed by monologues and a solo. We ask that you please turn off all your cell phones, watch us that beep, and if your child starts to cry, please take them outside and so that the others may continue enjoying the show. Please do not watch the show through your cameras or cell phones due to the fact that this is a live performance. Thank you and please enjoy my day. Inspector King called me. Oh, okay, over here. Hello, babe. I figured you'd like to see it before we took her away. Thanks, Liz. What happened? I've got to run through the pump with this. It's Webley, English, isn't it? Yeah, a Webley Force B 45 automatic, eight shot. They don't make them anymore. How many gone out of it? Just three. Let's see. Shot right here, huh? Standing like you are, facing the street. The killer came from over there. That it? That's it. The blast burnt her coat. Who found her? Woman on the beat. Anybody here with shot? Somebody must have. We just got here, though. You want to go take a look at her in the ambulance before we take her away? No. You've seen everything I could. Her gun was still tucked away at her hip. Had it been fired. Her overcoat was buttoned. I found a hundred dollar bill in her purse and 30-some bucks in her pockets. Was she working, babe? Well? Yeah, she was looking for a guy named Riley. What for? We wanted his shoe size. Don't crowd me, Liz. This Riley character, was it Colin Riley? Yeah, what of it? I hope you got your money in advance. What are you getting at? Just this. Riley was shot down in front of Maxim's barn girl about an hour ago. Eight slugs in him. I just finished cleaning up over there when the call came in about Angel. Are you sure it was Colin Riley? Colin Riley? Grubby rich kid from uptown? You sure it wasn't his brother Wayne? His twin brother? Just what did this Riley fella hire you guys for? I'm afraid there's not a lot to go on, Liz. It all started about a week ago. Yes, sweetheart? There's a guy here who wants to see you. His name is Wayne Riley. A customer? I guess so. You want to see him anyway. He's a knockout. Human, Brennan, darling. Human. <laughs> Mr. Riley? Thank you. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Riley? Thank you. <clears throat> I'm looking for a good, reliable, private detective, Miss Archer. I'd like to hire you. Your agency, that is. Suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. Gum? No, thank you, Miss Archer. I don't chew. Well, I'm looking for my brother. My twin brother, that is. His name is Colin, but he looks quite a bit like me. We're twins, you see. Identical, even. That's very nice, Mr. Riley, but... But I haven't seen him for almost three weeks. He's missing, you see. Missing? Who's missing? Oh, excuse me. It's all right, Angel. Come in. Mr. Riley, my partner, Angel Stark. How do you do? Mr. Riley's looking for his twin brother, Colin. Is that right? Yes, that's it. He's my twin. Identical even. And I was looking for him, you see. That's right, too. At least I was looking for him. Now I want you to look for him now, too. Ah, right. Well, do you have any clues as to your brother's whereabouts? I'm not certain, but I think he's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Why is that? Well, you see, Colin and I are heirs to the Riley estate. Perhaps you've heard of it? No? It seems that Mummy was into all sorts of business ventures. Colin could tell you more about it all than I could. I was never very interested in the family business, you see. 
But I don't know where Colin is, so I guess you'll have to wait to hear more about that. So you feel there's an ample motive for kidnapping what with you two being so very wealthy? Oh, heavens, yes. But <laughs> what is it that makes you think your brother's been kidnapped? Well, you see, Colin is always a little wild-like, but recently he's been keeping company with some rather questionable types. Really seedy characters. Took him out to dingy little spots. Kept him out to all hours. Took advantage of his good nature. They were nothing but a bunch of parasites, you see. Spending his money and stringing him along. And you feel that these friends of his would go so far as to kidnap him to extort money? Definitely. How long has Colin been missing? It was three weeks ago Thursday. What happened? Well, you see, he didn't come home. Where had he gone? Out with those horrid friends of his. He never told us where they went. And you've had no word of Colin since that night? Not a thing. I'm so worried. I just know something awful has happened. I just know it. No, no, there's no need to get upset. Can you tell us the names of some of Colin's friends or where we might find them? He spoke so little as activities. Oh. But there was one. A woman named Bradshaw. Yes, that's it. Spoke over several times, you see. Said she had connections. Do you have any idea where we might find her? No. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm afraid I'm not very helpful. We can begin making inquiries immediately. I'm sure we'll find her. But you must be careful. I'm deathly afraid of this woman named Bradshaw. What she might do. You just leave that to us, Mr. Riley. We'll know how to handle her. Thank you, Mr. Riley. I'll be in touch. That's all right, Angel. I can. But aren't you busy with the Carter business? That's nearly wrapped up. I don't want to drag you away from urgent affairs. I can devote my full attention to Mr. Riley. Thank you. Oh, yes. Will this be enough? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch, Mr. Riley. What do you think of him? Oh, he's sweet. Maybe you saw him first, but I spoke first, babe. Mm. Ah, oh. right. <laughs> That's the way it all started, Inspector. So, is that all you can tell me on this Riley business? <coughs> Just about. I was out of town on another case until yesterday. <coughs> That's when Mr. Riley showed up at the office again. Do I understand you correctly? Yes, I wish you to dispense with your services. But I thought you still hadn't found him. That's right, babe, but Mr. Riley informed me. Colin has come home, so your services are no longer required. This is quite a surprise. It certainly is. I trust that this will cover the remainder of your expenses. And then some. And may I ask where he was for the past four weeks? No, you may not. And now, ladies, if you'll allow me, I have other pressing matters to attend to. Thank you. Good morning. Mr. Riley! Well, how do you like that? Seems fair to me. Maximum income for minimum effort. Oh. I don't know, babe. I looked everywhere for this kid for a whole week and suddenly he just comes off the street? Where was he? Something's fishy here. Forget it, Angel. The little brothers have a spat and Colin runs away from home. After a while, he gets bored, cools off, and comes back. It's as simple as that. I don't know, babe. Did he just come off home off the streets? Where, where was he? Oh. Very chilly tonight. And that was the last I heard about Mr. Riley until tonight. Do you think Angel let it drop? Not if I know. New Angel. She tried for a whole week to find Colin, and she came up empty. That irked her. I bet my petticoat she tried to find out what happened. Do you think she found out? I think she got pretty close. Morning, darling. Morning. 
in, babe. You look awful. Been up all night, Vernon. Trying to figure out what to do? Yeah. My partner's dead. It's up to me to get the crooks responsible. It's what the cops are for, babe. Leave it to them. I keep trying to tell myself that, Vern. Somehow it doesn't wash. I owe it to Angel to get them myself. Don't do it, babe. You sound almost worried, mister. I am. This could be a dangerous game you're playing. And you're afraid I might get hurt? You know how I feel about you, babe. If anything were to happen, I can take care of myself. You better, Miss Archer. You just better. <laughs> so what are you going to do now? Well, I just... Anything else? You knew my partner, Angel Stark. She used to come in here pretty regular. Sure thing I knew, Angel. Tough break about her, eh, getting rubbed out like that. Yeah, tough break. You're a private eye too, eh? That's right, and I'm trying to figure out whoever did it. Glad to help. Angel is a straight guy, you know. On the level. The mug ought to get the chair for it. Right. So, what can I do for you? When was the last time you saw Angel? Yesterday. Came about, um, six o'clock, left about nine. And walked straight into the killer. Did she ever say anything about the case she was working on? Something about two brothers, a couple mugs, money to burn? <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, I remember. Twins, eh? Isn't real lookers, you say? You know, you know those Riley fellas have a lot of class, too. They have more money than they, than they know what to do with. And a real hunk, right? You know they don't have this town. Hotels, nightclubs, office buildings, they even own factories and warehouses down by the dock. But he's a real dish, am I right? Well, I'm not complaining, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all she said to me. Know anyone else who could tell me something about it? I might. Keep going. Well, you know, Miss Archer, I don't make much money working here. Good. Well, 20 bucks help your memory any? <laughs> Maybe Ashley can tell you something. Ashley? Ashley DuPont. He sings at the dance most nights. Him and Angel, well, they kind of thing going, you know. I get the picture. He around here? Right over there. You better go easy on him, though. He's taking it kind of hard. Angel's murder. Right. My 
mind if I join you? Why not? Why would I mind? I think you and I should get to know each other better, Mr. DuPont. Ha! <laughs> That's a good one, sister. I haven't heard that line in a while. It's no line, Mr. DuPont. I mean it. My name is Babe Archer. Your angel's partner. Right. And I guess you're trying to figure out who did her in? Right again. <coughs> I don't know anything about it. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions, Miss Judy Pont. Angel might have mentioned something to you that could help me. I don't think so. She never talked much about her work. Is that so? Funny that she'd discuss her case with Lou over there and not say a word to you. Yeah. Funny thing. You wouldn't be trying to hold out on me, would you, Mr. DuPont? Why would I do that? Oh, I don't know. It just seems that for someone so close to Angel, you're not very helpful. I have nothing more to say to you, Miss Archer. Please excuse me. Hold it, buddy boy. Maybe I'm way off base here, but you meant quite a bit to Angel. Didn't she mean anything to you? Don't you care that someone left her lying in the street with a belly full of lead? What do you want from me? I want you to help me. I can't. I just can't. Say, Miss Archer, I just thought of something. Yeah? I remember Angel saying that Riley was mixed up with some political organization. A cult or something? Do you remember what it was called? The Friends of People. Who are they, Angel? Could be a song circle for all I know. Sounds like a bunch of commies, Angel. I guess so. I'll find out tonight. I'm going to a meeting. A meeting? I bet you have to call everyone comrade. <laughs> The friends of people, eh? And she even went to a meeting? Sound familiar, Mr. DuPont? Yeah, she went to their meeting a few days ago. Just like Angel, not to mention it to me. She never was very big on politicos. How can I get in touch with these pinkos? I don't know that, Miss Archer. She never said where she went or who she talked to. Hey, Lou, did Angel ever- ah! <laughs> she, is she? Yeah, a real professional job. She never felt a thing. This is your fault. All of your snooping around. Why couldn't you leave well enough alone? <laughs> That's murder number three. I guess I'm on to something. There's a lot of stuff here that I can't account for. Angel must have come up with more than I thought. Yeah, but so much of it seems entirely pointless. All about, all this about the Riley estate, and then there's these names. And then, what's this list of numbers? That's a list of dates. Day, month, and year. How did Angel come up with all this stuff? She had her connections, dear. Can you make out what angels are in here, Vern? March 23rd, 11 o'clock, the Friends of People. Friends of People? They're a political organization that Riley got mixed up with. Ashley wouldn't tell me anything about them, so I better go and have a talk with them myself. The address is down near the docks. Strange place for a political get-together. Looks like we're in business, sweetheart. You gonna tell me why you've been following me, or are we gonna keep playing hide-and-seek? What? Come on, sister. I spotted you both outside the office yesterday, and you've been following me ever since. What do you think you're doing? Kidding us? I'm almost certain I saw you two at the Lazy Ace. The police would love to ask you a few questions. Maybe you saw someone stick a knife in Lou, the bartender? I don't know what you're talking about, but keep it up and you're gonna get it plenty. People lose teeth talking like that. If you wanna hang around, you'll be polite. Keep riding us. They're going to be picking iron out of the liver. The cheaper the crook, the gaudier the patter, eh? <laughs> You shouldn't go around with this on you. You might get yourself hurt. Now, shove off, Junior, while I'm still smiling. <laughs> we can figure this out. No, no, no. no, no this is obviously the right thing. No, no, that's not right. All right, kitties. Everyone stay put and keep your hands where I can see. 
see them. Ah, oh, Miss Archer, do come in. We've been expecting you. What the? You're a woman of nice judgment and many resources. I knew it wouldn't be long before we would meet. You may, Miss Archer, put away your firearm. If you don't mind, I think I'll hang on to it for the moment. It may help me get some answers to some questions. Such as? Who killed Angel Stark? And what happened to Wayne Riley? And what is the Friends of People? Interesting questions, Miss Archer. Yeah? Well, how about some answers? Let's start with who you are and what you're doing here. My associates and I are members of the Friends of People. You have an idea! My name is Bradshaw. Bradshaw, eh? Looks like I hit the jackpot. This is madness. No reason to get steamed up, sister. We must tell her no more. No more. Not a word. Now, now, ladies. I always thought comrades would be a lot more friendly. <laughs> There's no need to worry about Miss Archer. She's been under our scrutiny for some time. We need not fear her kind. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Miss B. You've got plenty to worry about with me around. I think we have nothing to say about those matters, Miss Archer. Oh, yeah? Well, think again and think fast. Someone's responsible for my partner's death, and when I find out who it is, they're going to pay. Now, how about it, Chuckles? Who killed Angel Stark? Well done, Wilma. Well done? You idiot, she could have killed me. I thought you hired these people to protect us. A very poor protection. She jumped me. I didn't have a chance to stop her. Unfortunate, Wilma. You must be more careful in the future. I shall lodge a formal complaint with the committee. This is entirely unacceptable. There is no telling what this hoodlum would have done. She nearly killed me. She could have killed us all. Ladies, please. There is no point in going on about this regrettable incident. It is over. Unfortunately, we must assume that if Miss Archer was able to find us, then the authorities will not be far behind. It's true. Very true. Yes, and all this talk of communists. <laughs> she clearly had little idea of our activities. The, the entire operation is in danger. So sad that we must waste an entire stage of the operation, but unavoidable. Now, ladies, if you'll follow me, my car is right outside. Honestly, can you take it like a woman? Would you rather <laughs> blood poison me? 
Just be a little gentle, that's all I ask. So, what's it going to be, babe? Well, Your Honor, you're right on both counts. It has to do with Angel's murder, and I think I'm on to something. But that's all I can tell you for now. Come on, babe. I need a favor, Liz. No way. Angel was my partner. I owe it to her to get this pump. I can't do it, babe. Just 24 hours. Do you know how much trouble I could get into? All I need is 24 hours, Liz. If I don't have the solution by then, I'll give you everything I got. Well, I'm going to need my head exam if we're doing this, but... <laughs> okay, then. It's your ball game for now. I'll try to keep the day in quiet. Thanks a lot, Liz. You won't regret it. 24 hours, not a moment longer. Right. What's wrong? How can you tell? Your poker face slipped. You're trying to think of something. One lousy thing. One simple thing I can't put my finger on and it's right there in front of me. You're close, aren't you? We're sitting right on top of it, baby. This thing is big. Those broads in the warehouse weren't just a bunch of mugs. This is a high-class operation. I don't know what the payoff is, but it's something darn big. You mean like a bank job? There's more to it than that. Just let me do it my way, okay? Sure. It's always your way, isn't it? Sure. Oh, oh. And that's why I love you? Sure. And you love me because I think that way? Sure. Miss Archer, Mr. DuPont, do you come in? I need to talk to you, babe. Can I get you some coffee? Sure thing, darling. Have a seat, Mr. DuPont. Call me Ashley, babe. Okay, Ashley. What's up? Why the sudden change of heart? My life is in danger, babe, and so is yours. Do they even knew I'm sure talking to you? There's no telling what they do. Who are you talking about? The friends of people. They came to see me that night after they killed Angel. My associates and I are concerned that you should exercise restraint in this matter. Very much concerned. <laughs> you will say nothing to Archer. I don't understand. Mr. DuPont, you know who we are, don't you? You're <coughs> the friends of people. Precisely. He knows too much. I propose, ladies, that we liquidate this little problem. <laughs> ah, ah, let us not be hasty, my friends. Mr. DuPont, we would like you to help us. Help you? Yes, there's a certain young woman, a Miss Babe Archer, with whom you are acquainted. She is Angel's partner. We would like you to keep us informed of her activities. Now why should I do that for you? We have connections, young man. Important connections. I would hate to see an accident happen to someone so young and handsome. <laughs> 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 It's so instant that I would help them, but now I can't. I just can't. They killed Angel, and no matter what they do to me, I can't help her murderers. Take it easy, Ashley. I have nothing left now that Angel's gone. The only gal that ever treated me right, the girl was real special, you know? But now she's gone. It's gonna be okay. Hey, Vernon, how about that coffee? Yes, thank you. Now these friends of people characters, what can you tell me about them? Bradshaw seems to be in charge. I was to report to her if I found anything important. Right, she's the one calling the shots. Oh, there's something else. It said something about headquarters. Thank you. Headquarters? Did they say where it was? I'm not sure, but I think they said something about Newark. Newark, eh? Don't the rallies on some property out that way? I'll get the files, babe. 
You have to stop them, babe, before it's too late. This is more than just a bunch of murders, isn't it, Ashley? Much, much more. That's the tip of the iceberg. What's it all about, then? What's their game? They're going to take over. They're going to change everything. It'll be horrible! Horrible! <laughs> that I need only shout to get help. But you won't do that. Why not? You just won't, mister. Please don't. Then how about spilling what you know? We'll start with this friends of people business, and if we happen to figure out who the killer is that's been running around loose, all the better. I, I can't. Look, Riley, I'm not about to blow a hole in you, but when I bounce the barrel of this thing off your skull, you're not going to oh. like it much. I can't tell you anything. That's too bad. No, wait, I'll tell you what I know. Now that's better. The friends of people have their have their headquarters here at my country home. I know that bit. Keep going. I've provided for the financial backing for the movement, and I'm part of the organizing committee. You can do better than that. I'm telling the truth. I can't believe what you're telling me, Colin. What? Come on, mister. I met your little brother, Wayne. He was a flighty little bird. Couldn't hold still for a moment. He didn't chew, either. Yes. Yes, Miss Archer. We fooled everyone, even the police. But you're right. It was Wayne that they shot. We will make all of the necessary arrangements. Wayne will be taken care of quickly and efficiently. But will the authorities be convinced that it's me? It is simple to falsify the records involved. It will appear that Colin Riley has met an untimely demise. Then I will take up Wayne's identity, his untarnished image. And leave the entire estate at our disposal to advance the cause. Yes, for the cause. That was the plan. Now, what is this friends of people business? We are an organization dedicated to the equality of the sexes. You're putting me on. It's no joke, Miss Archer. You mean to tell me that a bunch of men's livers are behind all this? Mm -hmm. I knew you would uncover our intentions eventually, Miss Archer. Bring me her gun, please, Mr. Riley. We meet again, Bradshaw. Is this equality stuff for real? Quite real, Miss Archer. The Friends of People intends to spread equality throughout the world. We wish to free modern man from the shackles of social repression, from his forced position, position of inferiority, to take his rightful place as a woman's partner in the advance of civilization. That's a pretty tall order, Junior. It will be a long battle, but a just one. And was Angel just another casualty in this battle? Miss Stark was dangerously close to discovering the facts of our operation. Unfortunately, you seem to be more resourceful than she was. Of course, now that you have actually discovered the truth, you will also have to be eliminated. Of course. 
You know, it just strikes me as odd that you needed these hoods to promote your movement. Ugh. Ah! Ow. You better drop it, kid. Do as she says, ladies. Don't feel bad, ladies. I've pulled that move on better crooks than you. Of course, you haven't done too bad. The way I figure it, you've got four hills between the two of you. That ought to get you the chair for sure. They'll never stick us with those. Oh, but they will, Regina. Once we get these songbirds to the cops, they'll give more than enough evidence just to save their own skins. You've had it, punk. As for Mr. Riley, I think he's in this up to his pretty little neck. I've seen some opportunists in my time, but you take the cake. How much did it cost to have Wayne killed? <coughs> Who's their idea? Come, come, Mr. Riley. Let us put credit where it is due. Colin no longer wished to share the estate with his brother. In return for his support of the movement, we arranged to have Wayne killed. It was a arrangement beneficial to all involved. Shut up! I did it for the movement. It was all for the movement. <laughs> a pretty tidy little affair. Now, perhaps you could tell me what you were doing with those foreigners in the warehouse? Perhaps we can explain, Miss Archer. Of course. You will put down your gun, please. Well, speak of the devil. Wilma, her gun. Mr. Riley, we have, we have converted many influential young men into leading in quality of the sexes. The indoctrination took only three weeks to complete, and he has no memory at all. Brainwashing? That's a lie! I support the friends of people of my own free will! You see, no memory at all. It's diabolical! In a few days, the Friends of People would arise as a political force represented by hundreds of cells across the country. Within a year, equality would, be, would infiltrate every aspect of society. How long do you imagine it would be before the real effects were beginning to be felt? It's depraved! That wouldn't happen! You've got it all wrong! Men aren't capable to do that kind of work. They weren't meant to do it. Precisely! The Western society as a whole would dissolve as a result of male incompetence. <laughs> and what happens when we reach chaos? Then we march in and take control. You commies got it all figured out, don't you? Mm. Ah, but I see. You have made an error, Miss Archer. We are not communists. Then who are you? The, the Fourth Reich! Reich. Incredible. <laughs> this is like something out of a dime novel. Your investigation, Miss Archer, has ruined our plans. Your attention has, in turn, drawn that of the authorities, forcing us to cease all operations for the time being and await a more appropriate time to launch our final assault on the West. <coughs> and now, Miss Archer, unfortunately, we must say goodbye to you and Mr. Riley. Goodbye? What do you mean? You are no further use to us, Mr. Riley. The operation will be more secure without you. No, you can't! Sorry, gorgeous. You can't do this to me! Such a shame, really. And now, Miss Archer. Takeover. You don't say. We had word from the feds of Nazi operations underway, but I couldn't get anything definite on it. Men's Liz, can you believe it? That's what comes with giving them the vote. Yeah. <laughs> she did pretty good without us, Inspector. Babe! It's over now, isn't it? 
What are you doing here, sweetheart? I came with the inspector. I wasn't going to sit at the office and wait by the phone. You have to thank him, babe. If he hadn't called us when he did, there's no telling what could have happened. I might have known. Guys just can't keep a secret. I guess not, babe. <laughs> I don't know whether to kiss you or smack you one. You can always kiss me, babe. Right. Come on, Liz. Let's go grab a root beer somewhere. Sounds good. <laughs> Excuse me Many 
small businesses fold each year. Everybody buys frozen lemonade at Safeway. <laughs> what this lemonade stand needs is a bathroom. It's a wonder the health department hasn't shut me down. <laughs> lemonade sale here. Last chance to buy one and get one free. All this yelling is sure hard on my throat. <laughs> Pure, fresh, cheap lemonade here. Hello, madam. Two glasses? Yes, ma'am. Coming right up. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm all out of lemonade. Sometimes <laughs> I really impress myself. Every once in a while, I get a fantastic idea. A really great, creative idea. This is such an idea. This may look like an ordinary dish towel, but it isn't. No, no indeed. indeed. This devious device is going to keep me from being the laughing stuff of the entire seventh grade. Tomorrow night is the seventh grade dance. The first boy girl dance of my junior high career. And today is the final day to get tickets for it. This means that if anyone is planning to ask anyone else to go to the dance, today is the last day to do the asking. It is painful for me to admit this. But, but I, I do not, not have a date, date for the seventh grade, grade dance. dance. Nor is there any potential date in sight. Everyone else is going. Everyone! Even Marlene McNulty, who has stringy hair which she never washes and says, Oh, oh, I, I get it. Ten minutes after everyone else has finished laughing at a joke. <laughs> Even Marlene is going. Well, I decided not to dwell on the reasons why I'm not going. Instead, I'm going to fix it so I can't possibly go, no matter how many people were standing in line to go with me. There. That looks realistic. No one would expect me to go to the dance like this. When they ask me what happened, I'll just say that I sprained my wrist and that my arm is sling for a couple of days. Better yet, I'll say I broke my wrist. No, I broke my arm. That really sounds impressive. <laughs> How did I break it? I'll just say I was doing something dangerous. Heroic, even. I might as well get all the attention that I can. <clears throat> I broke my arm when I dove into the shallow end of my neighbor's pool to save their little boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's only 18 months years old and doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> I happened to be walking around when I saw him toddling around the edge. Then I heard the splash. So I climbed the fence and dove in, fully clothed, even in my shoes, and rescued him. It was kind of tough giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation when I knew my arm was broken, but I hung in there until the medics arrived. <laughs> Maybe I better not say that. Too easy for someone to check and find out that my neighbors don't have a swimming pool. Or a little boy. Let's see. I broke it helping an elderly woman in a wheelchair. She's rolling down a hill, faster and faster, coming towards me. At first I thought she was some kind of daredevil old lady and I tried to get out of her way. But then I heard her yell, Help, help! My brakes are gone! I realized she was out of control. The only way that I could stop her was to throw myself in front of her wheelchair. She ran over my arm, but it was worth it because I got her stop. There were tears of gratitude in her eyes as she offered me a $500 reward, but of course, I wouldn't take it. When I look back on my life in years to come, I don't think missing the seventh grade dance will be particularly memorable. But I think I know it will be memorable. The day, the day I, I broke, broke my arm. arm. <laughs> more than I've ever wanted anything in my life. Not for the $25, although I could have used the money, but because deep down inside of me, I wanted to be a writer. And I wasn't sure if I had any <coughs> talent. I thought maybe winning first prize at a poetry competition would mean that I'd have some ability. I'm not real good at most other things, especially sports. Everybody else jogs, they work out, they lift weights and play tennis or volleyball. I hate exercising. I'm always the last one to be chosen when I pick teams for baseball or basketball. And the only reason I passed physical education last year was because my gym partner lied for me and said I'd done the required three push-ups when I could barely manage one. Maybe that's why the poetry competition was so important. 
When you're really brought in those things, you want to be extra good at the things that you really care about. I worked on my contest entry every day for two weeks. I wrote seven different poems and threw them all away. I wrote about butterflies and kittens and the way I feel when I hear such intense music. I wanted my poems to be beautiful, but instead they were awkward and curly. But I didn't give up. I kept writing. I revised and changed the words around and thought of new ideas for poems. And then, on the last night before the contest deadline, I wrote a poem that I knew was good. It was a simple poem, but every time I read it, I got goosebumps on my arms. I knew it was the best writing I'd ever done. I called it Unicorn Magic, and I entered it in the contest the next morning. The winner was not announced for two weeks. During those two weeks, I floated in a special dream, imagining what it'd be like to sit at the award ceremony and have my name announced as the first prize winner of the poetry competition. On the day of the awards, I couldn't eat breakfast. I got up half an hour early just so I had time to wash my hair. And I wore my new pants, the ones that made me look better than I am. Before the principal announced the winner, he announced the winners of the 10 best poems. Mine was one of them. My heart began to pound, and my mouth got all dry. Then he announced the winner. First place to Kathy Anderson for her poem titled Goldfish Jubilee. When Kathy's name was called, she shrieked and jumped up, and all her friends screamed and cheered. I just sat there, stunned. I couldn't believe Unicorn Magic had lost when it made me get goosebumps every time I read it. If Kathy Anderson, who laughs at dirty jokes and flirts with all the guys, and who thinks that cheerleading <laughs> is the most important thing in the world, if Kathy can write better poetry than I can, then I might as well give it up forever. Except I couldn't. I went home that day and wrote a poem about how much it hurt to lose the competition. When I read the poem the next morning, I got goosebumps on my arms, and I knew I'd keep writing, even if I never won any awards. I studied Kathy's poem in the booklet. I had to if it was good. Long after the poetry competition was out and school was over, I was looking through some magazines in the public library when I came across a poem titled Goldfish Jubilee. For one awful moment, I thought that Kathy Anderson had not only won the poetry competition, that actually had her poem published. Then, then, yeah. then I looked at the author's name. Andrew Billings. Goldfish Jubilee by Andrew Billings. The poem was the same, the author was not. Should I call the principal and demand that the poems be rejudged? Should I call Kathy Anderson and tell her she, I knew she cheated? What good would it do? That moment in the auditorium when the poem, when the poem, when the author of the poem's name was called, was over. It was gone. I hate Kathy Anderson for what she did, but I also feel sorry for her, too. She has a framed certificate in $25. But she doesn't know how it feels to write her very own poem and get goosebumps on her arms. And she'll never know. And she'll never know. And she'll never know. And she'll never know. What do you mean you're being bored? No, no, you can't be happy to me. Can't the TV work things out? I mean, how bad can it possibly be? It's you, right? It's your fault. Always is. You're always writing, Daddy. Nagging him. I hear you. Maybe if you weren't such a nag, then he wouldn't be leaving. Why shouldn't I, Daddy? She should know the truth. If she weren't always on your case, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. I can't believe you're doing this to me. Do you know how embarrassing this is going to be for me at school? Everyone thinks we're happy. I'm always telling people how in love you two are. How I want to have the same kind of life. What am I going to do? I mean, really, I'm going to have to change school. All my friends' parents are still married, you know. Please tell me what's going on, Daddy. Tell me why you're leaving. Tell me what's wrong. No, no, don't hug me. Don't hug me. How can you do this to me? Huh? How could you? I don't want to be comforted, Dad. Wait. Wait. Please don't go, Daddy. I promise I'll do better. I'll go easy on shopping. I won't bug you about the silly stuff. I'll do all the chores without tripping out. I'll do anything. Mom, why is he leaving? No, I don't want to hear that, okay? There's no such thing as making it work out for all of us, okay? There's, There's no, no such thing. thing. Stop trying to lie to me. I'm not a child. This is the worst possible thing that could ever happen. No, I'll never. Never forgive either one of you. Ever again. <laughs> You'll be sorry, but your tears will be too late. You'll be broke and I'll have money. Will I help you? Don't be funny. Just, just you wait, Henry. Just you wait. Just you wait, Henry. 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 Just you wait, Henry.
fetch your doctor double quick. I'll be off a second later, go straight to the theater. Oh, oh, oh. and we can just do it. Oh, oh, oh.